Now that we have completed the highlight and shadows on your face, let's lock the face layer and turn the eyeball off. The visibility, we don't need to have those distracting us right now. I'm also going to turn off the posterized layer because right now I don't need to see the shadows and highlights. I want to go back to the original image to trace. I'm going to click on the top layer here, face. I have it all locked. I don't want to draw on the face. I'm done with it for now. I have my posterized and reference layer locked. Don't want those to move. And I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to option click on new layer. It's going to pop up the layer options menu. And I'm going to call that eyes. And I'll give you a couple tips here on eyes. I'm going to take my zoom tool. And I'm just going to zoom in on one of Mrs. Hayes' eyes like this. Now, to do something realistic, you might want to include this kind of fleshy pink part, right? So if I come in, I might want to pen tool this and then come around. Let's see, I'm gonna, like I said, using my MacBook Pro trackpad, I don't have a mouse, so this is a little bit tricky, but we'll make it work. All right, so I'm making this. I'm gonna go all the way around, even though most of it will be covered up later by the white part of the eye. I wanna make sure I have a nice kinda of fleshy bit section. And as always, option to kinda of seal this off. And I'm just gonna pull it just a little bit so it's a little bit rounded instead of a point. All right, command click anywhere just to deactivate that line. Now let's do the white of the eye. So I'm gonna go like this. I want to try to follow the pinky flesh as much as possible. We can use Shape Builder to cut things off at some point if we need to. I'm gonna come down here and I want to match this up. Oops kind of something like that. I'm a little bit off. I can see a little bit of skin right there. I'm going to leave it like that. I actually want the white to come right there, but I can have some flesh tone there and some flesh tone there. And I'm going to command click. Now we have the iris. Now you could pin tool that or get smart. Use the ellipse tool. Find the center somewhere. And we want to make it proportional and drag it out from the center. So I'm going to hold shift and option at the same time. And I'm just going to drag out and get kind of close. All right. I'm going to do something like that. Take my selection tool and then just kind of match it up a little bit. All right. Now what I could do is I can select the white part of the eye and I can hold shift and I can collect, uh, select the iris. I come over to my shape builder tool. And like we've learned earlier, we can option click and makes it perfect, right? Cuts it off perfect for us. Now, if you'll notice, eyes also have a lot of kind of detail in here, right? It's not just a one solid color kind of thing. There are these kind of little lines, these starbursts that come out. So let's see, how might we be able to do that? I'm going to take an ellipse tool and I'm going to draw it smaller than the iris. I'm going to hold shift and option, kind of something like that maybe. A little bit smaller. I'm going to make this a fill color for now. So I'm going to swap, right, make it a solid fill and not a stroke. Then over here underneath the width tool, I'm going to hold down and there's a scallop tool. Any of these tools over here, these are kind of warp tools, right? All these little tools that um, do a bunch of weird warping to a shape. If you select one and double click, there are options. How complex do you want the scalp? How much detail? How wide? All of this. And it's all about experimenting. I'm actually going to hold down and then I'm going to pull this off because we're going to use a couple of those, right? We're going to use this one and probably that one. So I got my scallop tool and I want it slightly bigger than that circle I just drew. If your brush 
is too big, it'll be a problem. If it's not bigger than the shape, it'll be a problem. So I can hold Shift and Option, right? And I can drag my hand in or out. Right, I have my mouse clicked, I'm dragging in or out to change the size. You can also double click if that's not working and change the width and height right there. All right, so I got a little bit bigger than my shape. I'm gonna click and hold in the middle till it makes kind of a starburst like that. Yours might be a little bit different. It's okay, we're just looking for round in the middle starburst. Then I'm gonna take my crystallize tool. I'm gonna come over it and I'm gonna click in the center once to crystallize it. Then I'm gonna come back to my scallop tool again and click once like that. And then now we kind of have this cool detail, right? I'm gonna move that in to my eye like that. And we might want to center it kind of in the middle of the iris. I can use my arrow keys on the keyboard just to kind of line it up for now. We might need to cut it off, see how it's going over the edge. We'll worry about that later. And then lastly, our eye probably needs a pupil. So I'm gonna take the ellipse tool again. I'm gonna come right about the center there. Shift and option, right? Drag out a pupil. So we have a pupil, little starburst type of thing for detail, and our eye. In the next tutorial, well, actually, here, let's do this. Command minus, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Once you have an eye like that, if your image is kind of straight on, like mine is, and I might fix this, that looks like a lot of fleshy tone, right? I might, even though it technically looks like that, maybe just for the sake of the drawing. Oops, oh well, I'll fix that later. Anyhow, take my selection tool, you might want to fix things, just knowing that that might look kind of big, but we'll worry about that when we color it in. I'm gonna select my eye, all right? Then I'm going to right click on it. And as long as my portrait, the eyes look about even, right? Left and right, looking kind of straight on. One's not more squinty than the other. I don't have to do this eye from scratch. You can to be more precise, or if they're pretty close to size and shape, transform, reflect, vertical, all right, vertical and make a copy. And then I'm gonna hold shift in my right arrow key and I'm just going to move that into place, something like that. I'm gonna click off, see what we got. So I'm kind of close. I'm gonna move it up just a little bit with my arrow key, move it over to the right. And it's not perfect. Let me see if it'll work. There we go, something like that. Line up the iris. I'm pretty close. I would need to fix this shape. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna take the white part of the eye. I'm gonna copy it. Command C to copy. I want a copy of that behind it to make the fleshy part. So Command B for behind. All right, B for behind. I'm gonna take my white arrow I'm going to double click on this point and I'm just going to kind of drag it out to create that fleshy tone. I can zoom in. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it perfect if you want, but you want it kind of close so you can come in, move some of these. Remember, we have two shapes now. So I click on that one and that one also, and I'm gonna move it out, move it up, get them to match, and now I have both eyes, right? If I'm off a little bit like this, I'm just going back, whoops, we want it still round though, so let's get it the right way here. Kinda of tricky with the trackpad, but now we got it nice and round. I have two eyes, like I said, this one, I wasn't really feeling, so I'm gonna double click and bring it in like that, make it shorter. Even though it looks like it goes all the way out there, I just think it'll look weird. All of this is fine tuning, right? You don't have to do it exactly like your photo. Once you start to fill in colors and you've outlined it, if you need to nudge things or tweak things and it's a little bit different from the original photo, that's fine. 
make it look good, even if you have to fudge it a little bit. 